Hello friends, hope you are all doing well. Welcome to the Mathematical Room. This is me, caretaker, once again. So, as promised in the last video, today we are going to see Intuitive or Life Set Theory. Intuitive because this approach to set theory is based on our intuition. What we generally think of sets in our ordinary life as a collection of objects, that intuition is used to study set theory and that approach to set theory is called intuitive or naive set theory. For example, someone who knows or thinks of sets as ordinary collections of objects, that nebulous notion of set is enough for dealing with sets in this part of set theory, I mean, or in this approach of set theory. So, sets, when we think of sets, what comes to our mind? Some collections of objects, right? But to be more precise, mathematicians have, although it is intuitive, but still we have to be precise about our things in mathematics. Imprecise definitions or concepts will get us nowhere. So, mathematicians have devised a definition for sets. And it goes like this, which many of you may already know. A set is a well-defined collection of distinct objects. So, a set is considered to be a well-defined collection of distinct objects. So, this is the definition that everyone uses in mathematics when we speak about sets. Now, these objects can be any sort of object, okay? Any idea or any physical object anything in an object is supposed to be any sort of thing that you can think of and in particular sets are also considered as objects in their own right. So, among the many things, all possible things, sets in particular are also considered as objects in their own right, which simply means that sets can also be objects of another collection, which is a set. So, we will come to this point later on. But let us first of all decipher this definition. What does this definition actually mean to say? And what is the meaning of well-defined and distinct? We of course know what well-defined and distinct mean, but how, how do they shape this definition? What sort of collections ultimately get to be sets when we restrict them using these conditions? Okay, so let us first see what we mean by well-defined. Okay, now a collection of objects, when we say collection, it will mean a collection of objects. A collection of objects is called well defined if given any object there is a clear and unambiguous way of
determining whether the object belongs to the collection or not. So this is what we mean by well-defined. A collection is well-defined when if you are given, for example, suppose there is a collection like this of some objects. If you are given an object, then there should be a clear and unambiguous way of deciding whether this object belongs to the collection or does not belong to the collection. If there is any doubt about that, then the collection is not well defined. So let us see with examples what that means. So you can take this example, let A be the collection of all the states of India now. So A is the collection which consists of all the states of India, country India. So if you are given an object for example, if you are given a sum, okay, this is in the collection. There is no doubt about that. Assam is the state of India, so it belongs to the collection A. Whereas Delhi, although it is a place in India, it does not belong to this collection A. It's not a state, it's a union territory. Okay, so this is an example of a well-defined collection. So it satisfies the first criterion for being a set. Okay, whereas if you take this other collection, let B be the collection of all. good days in the year 2020. This is not a well-defined collection because this is not objective. Good does not mean something objective. I mean, for someone, a given day may be good for you, it may be bad. Although most of us will uh, more or less unanimously agree that most of the days in 2020 are bad, but that is a different thing altogether. The point here is that deciding whether a day is good or bad of the year 2020 depends on the person who is deciding. So there is no clear and unambiguous way of deciding whether a given day, for example, 10th of October is good or bad, whether it belongs to the collection or not. It cannot be decided in an objective way. So this is not a well-defined collection and as such, it fails to satisfy the first criterion for being a set. So this is not a set. This is a set, but there is one more criterion that we have to come at. Uh, so this is the meaning of being well-defined. A more mathematical example, let, me, let us take a more mathematical example sorts of collections that arise in mathematics, let P be the collection of all prime numbers.
So P is the collection which consists of all the prime numbers. So this is a well-defined collection because if we are given an object, then we can decide without any doubt whether it's a prime number or not. So this collection is well-defined and it arises in mathematics. Okay, now, but what about distinctness of objects? So let's come to that point. So, <clears throat> distinctness of objects, <sighs> the heat, anyway, if we repeat an object in a set, for example, there is a set, um, let me take an, an example of a concrete set, suppose I have three numbers, 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Now, the set of these three numbers. So far, I have not told you anything about how to write a set or how to specify its elements. We will come to that. We are coming to that soon. But let us consider this. This is the set of three numbers. 1, 2, and 3. Now, if in any representation of this set, I repeat the element 1, or for example, also I repeat two several times. That does not change the status of the element two as being an element, as an element of the set. It further does not do anything. It, the two stays, continues to be an element of the set. But of course, if we, if in a representation we do not write, for example, if we write only two and three, suppose we are, uh, repeating 2 and we have written 3 but in this representation we have left out 1 then of course it changes as long as we are not leaving any element out repetition does not actually change anything so repetition is in a set Repetition of elements is not wrong, but unnecessary. We can repeat elements in a set. For example, this set and this set are the same thing. Okay. It consists of three elements. It also consists of those three elements, although two has been repeated several times. So it is not wrong, but it does not achieve anything. So it is not wrong, but unnecessary. As such, we make the convention that we do not repeat elements in a set. Thereby, we get not just a well-defined collection, but a well-defined collection of distinct objects. Okay, so that's what distinctness means. There is no point uh, writing the same thing again and again. Now, sets are denoted by, now there are some notations that we should be familiar with when uh, studying set theory. Sets are denoted by capital letters. For example, A, B, right now we have considered collections. And the elements in them are denoted by small letters, A, B, C, etc. Okay. Now, in a set, elements in a set, I have said, no? I should have said objects in a set. Now, if a set has some objects, they are also called elements or members or points of that set 
objects, elements, members, points, these words are used synonymously, although sometimes the word points is used in a more geometric situation or a topological situation. We will come to those things later. So when you uh, see a statement which says elements of a set or members of a set or objects of a set or points of a set, they mean the same thing. Okay, now, if an element A belongs to the set capital A, then we denote that by this symbol, A belongs to A. This means small a is an element of capital A, or an object in capital A, or a member of capital A, or a point in capital A, same thing. And this also is written like this. A belongs to A, capital A contains small a, small a is a member of capital A, etc. They mean the same thing. In symbol, in mathematical symbol, it is written like this. This is the notation for belonging. This is a relation which relates an element of a set to the set. Okay. And if the element A does not belong to A, then to denote that fact, we just strike that symbol out. Okay, and we write like this. This means that small a is not in capital A. Small a, the object small a, is not an element of the set capital A. Right. Now, having set up the notation, we now simplify some things a little bit. You see, Strictly speaking, if we want to say that a set contains this element and that element, we have to keep on writing like this. For example, the set consisting of these three elements, 1, 2 and 3. If I am denoting that set by A, then to denote the fact that these are the elements in A, I may write 1 belongs to A, and let me write.